In this week's screencast, we'll be talking about Celery, and we'll be picking up where we left off last time. Last time, you'll know we set up a tiny project that allowed us to send emails on user signup. Now, this week, we'll be dealing with a little bit more complex Celery data tasks, as well as dealing with databases inside your tasks, as well as writing management commands in Celery. We'll also lightly touch on brokers and how they interact with Celery and your project. So before we begin any of the coding in this tutorial, we're going to first need to understand what role RabbitMQ plays in the Celery task and your Django project. So for most Django projects, you have a producer, which is the project itself. It has some tasks that it wants to accomplish. We have a queue, which is the queue of things we need processed. And we have a couple of consumers, which is your Celery worker. So once you have an architecture similar to this, what happens is your, your machine needs to send out a task that the consumers are aware of. Now the consumers are running a similar copy of your code and have the functions and tasks. So in our task method here, the consumer is aware of this task. So what happens is your application sends down a task with some information and arguments. The consumer sees that, selects the proper arc, selects the proper um, function to run our task and then runs and processes it and returns the result. Now in the middle here is where RabbitMQ sits. RabbitMQ is what's delegating did this task complete? Did it not complete? Was it successful? Was it unsuccessful? Has the has the thing run in time? Does it need to run at a specific time? That is what RabbitMQ manages. Now RabbitMQ is the only one I would trust going forward. Celery only technically has support for Redis and RabbitMQ. RabbitMQ should be your broker, not your result store. Now, if you use RabbitMQ as your result store, meaning if you want to process something and then store the results, so let's say you're calculating, um, um, let's say you're adding two and two and you're calculating four, and you want to add those two numbers together and get a result and hold on to that result. Now, if you were to put that result in RabbitMQ and then ask for it once, once you ask for it, it is gone. RabbitMQ is a message queue, not data storage. So if you're going to need to keep your data storage around, I suggest you use something like Redis. But I highly recommend RabbitMQ as a message queue or a broker. Now, understanding that, there is another type, which we'll also get into, is routing. So routing is very similar to the previous example, except that you can bind it to different queues. So let's say you have a particular type of task. You can have multiple queues. So you can have all the queues that have a black tag. So these two, for example, here are delegated to deal with tasks of type black. Um, you can also have it so that you, you have like a one particular worker who's doing an extensive a lot of jobs. So let's say it's running continuously throughout the day. You want it to have it all directed to one queue rather than two queues so that one set of jobs isn't starved out while another one is blocking the queue completely. So if you know you have a noisy task set, you want to maybe give them their own dedicated queue, which they can process themselves through. So now that we understand what is going on, we're going to take a deeper look at what's being sent down. Now with, and this is going to be very key when we're dealing with our model model problem and we're going to, I'm going to illustrate in a second here. What it's sending down is a serialized portion of your data. So it's going, Hey, I got this thing here. It's an object you need to run again. You need to do something to this when I, when you're ready. And that's the consumer. So the producer, our Django app, sends a thing with a particular type to one of these queues. And it says, you are X, you have these arguments, run. Now, if it sends an object, that object needs to be serialized. And, and in serializing that object is where the problem lies. So let's say we send this task down. It has some state. And we send it to the queue. Now, you have an indefinite amount of time that in which the task will run. It's not going to run immediately. It's going to run sometime in the future. So what happens is the task gets sent down and then let's say the user logs in again and then changes their name. And let's say that the, the task is very dependent on their name. Let's say it was going to go look up that name, use that name to look up something else. The user's name has changed now and that object isn't referenced anymore. So when the consumer finally ends up running that particular task with that particular object, it blows up. So I'm going to show you guys how to go across this particular problem and how it can happen. So let's quickly illustrate something, a simple task that'll illustrate the problem that I just outlined. So we're going to write a little function or a class, a task class that cleans up the games. So we're going to call it clean 
games task and that task simply what it does is it takes a set of games and once it has that set of games it runs and checks to see so for each game in games for game in games what do we want to do we want to first check to see if the game has been run so we're gonna need to import DeLorean here so we're gonna go from DeLorean import DeLorean we're simply going to go get a DeLorean object which references the time of now and we're gonna get a naive object so we can compare them without issue since our game models are naive date times so we're gonna have start date and time is greater than now we're simply gonna print game hasn't occurred yet else we're going to make the game not active so we're gonna mark all the games that have passed after now not active and then we're gonna run this every hour or so so we can say hey we can clean up the games that have already happened so we're going to then save we're gonna go game dot save and then all that's left to do is register task the task Excellent. So we have a task now that gets a set of games, iterates over those games to check to see if the game has happened yet. If it hasn't happened yet, we're simply going to print the game hasn't happened yet. So we're going to pass the name of the game to the thing and then it's going to say you haven't happened yet. And if not, if it has happened, we're going to set the game active to false so it doesn't show up in our system anymore and we're going to register the task. Pretty straightforward. So the next thing that we need to do is create a management command. So as you'll see here in our games folder, I've gone ahead in Django, you need to create this directory structure, which is a management directory under an app directory. You have to have a manage folder. Then inside that you have to have a commands folder. If you're using Python 2, please don't get, don't forget the dunder init files, which tells Python you need to look in these files. So I've written this, I've created this file. We're going to call this cleanup. And what this basically is, is a management command. So you know how you run Python manage.py sync db? Well, this is allows you to create a similar command, which does some custom work that we're going to specify. This one's going to specify, hey, run the task that we've declared and run the cleanup in a celery process. So what we're going to do is go from Django dot core dot management dot base import base command from register dot task so we need our task so we're gonna go tasks import clean games task and that's the task we just created and we're going to need our models here so we're going to need the access to we're going to need to get the, all the set of games so we're going to need the access to the game model so from game dot models import game so now that we have all that stuff all we need to do is declare our management to command so we're going to go class command base command and we are just going to give it a title here so when somebody looks at the command they know what's going on this is a management command that deletes that marks games as inactive after they have after they have happened perfect it doesn't take any arguments so our args is going to be simply an empty string it does, however, need a help text, which we will provide. So when somebody tab completes this, it'll show what does this command actually do. So a shorthand form cleans up finished games from the system. 
quite straightforward. And then our method that we need to write is handle. So we're going to handle a command. It's going to pass self, some args, and some keyword arguments. Now we have that. We're going to have to get all our set of games. So our function, the get clean games task is expecting a set of games. So in order to get all the games, we're going to have to go game dot objects dot filter, and we're going to get all the active games. So we're going to go active is equal to true is our filter. So we don't want to pass down any of the false games because we don't want to put excessive load in our system and RabbitMQ because like when everything we set, we send down the pipe is going to have to go up to a RabbitMQ server and then back down to our celery consumer. So always keep that in mind when you're creating stuff that you're passing to a celery task. It has to go up and down the pipe both ways. So we're going to go ahead and just print this game so we have some insight as to what hap what's happening here. And then we're going to call our clean games task here. And then we're going to call delay and we're going to pass in the games, which fits our syntax for our previous one. Right? It's going to get a set of games, iterate over those games, and mark the ones that aren't needed as as saved so this is quite great so go let's go ahead and do something here real fast so we're gonna need to sleep inside here we've gone ahead and added a sleep so we imported sleep from time and I've given it a 15 15 second sleep as soon as you run the task so what's happened is we're gonna fire the task the celery task is going to wait 15 seconds and then run in that time I'm going to go to the back end and delete one of the games that was passed down into the task so we launched our task it passed down the set of games. While that's sleeping, I'm going to delete one of those tasks and we're gonna see what actually ends up happening in our system. Um, so let's quickly just set up what we need to do to make this happen. So we have our task release reset up again. We have our management command ready to run. So it is the same name as the file. So our file here was called cleanup. So it's the same name without the that pi extension. Excellent, so what we need to do is get ready to delete this game. So we're just gonna quickly um, fire this task and we're gonna switch over here. We're going to then delete this game. Yes, I'm sure. Go back to the games. We only have two games. And let's see what happens to our salary task. So as you can see, clearly see, game three hasn't occurred yet. The task received three games one two three and in between I deleted one so let's go back to our database and see what actually happened hmm the one that we deleted has come back again which is quite odd and it is marked as no so if we go back to our task code we see that it marks it as false and saves the game again now remembering what we discussed earlier the games object is a serialized set of the data that we pushed up to the queue. So the queue has a serialized version of that. And then when the task runs, it also has a serialized version. So when we go and set the games variable to false and then save it, and in between while that was happening, somebody went and decided to delete it, we have the celery consumer recreating that object and saving it again to the database. Now, this is a problem, and it causes our data to be inconsistent and, and in a state where a lot of mistakes can happen at scale, and even at small scales. So we're going to rewrite our task in order to solve this problem and avoid this duplication or recreation of deleted tasks in Celery. So first things first, our management command is passing down objects rather than references to objects. Now, the objects we're, pull, we're looking up are in our database. They have IDs. So we can use those IDs to look up the objects in the database. So what we're going to do here is rewrite this so that it passes IDs to the objects that we're interested in. So what we're going to do is call the values on this query set that returns all the active games. We're going to only be interested in the ID of the, of the object. So we're going to have a list of dictionaries with, with one key in it, which is ID. And, and then as the value is the ID of the game. We need this to be a list since we're going to be iterating over them in our clean games task. So what we need to do is pull out the pull out the IDs from the list of dictionaries. So what we do is use a list comprehension. 
and then we're gonna go game an individual game we're gonna ask for its ID and then for game in games so what this means is for the game in games get its ID and add that to the list of games so once we have all that we're gonna be passing that so we're just for consistency sake we're gonna print games at the end of that just so we know it passed the correct IDs and the number of games we know that there are three games that need to be processed when we're running so that's just a blind check for us there so let's quickly go to our tasks now we're gonna leave the sleep in there which gives me time to delete but we're going to add a little bit more logic outside this so this games variable isn't appropriate anymore we're gonna call it game IDs is a more appropriate name here so we're gonna pass the IDs in there and then we're gonna change of course, change what games is here, and we're gonna call this game ID. Once we're inside here, what we're gonna do is look up the object in the database. So what we'll need to do is import from game dot models import game. So we're gonna be doing our lookups inside our task. So this helps us avoid the things happening in between when the thing is run because we're always doing the lookup as we run our code. So when we immediately start to do stuff with our objects, we look it up from the database. So that'll be as quick as we were doing it locally when we were doing it at the time of access. So what we do is to solve the problem of stale or out of date objects when we're going through the seller queue is to ask for them inside the task in which you're operating them with. So anything that you need to pay passing up, you, you would, instead of passing it up, you would look, then look it up in the task that you're acting in currently, like so. So we're gonna have a game variable here, and we're gonna go game dot objects dot get ID, and then we're gonna pass in the game ID, and that should get us the object we're interested in. Now this not might not always be the case. So let's say someone were to delete the game in between. So we're gonna try that, and we're gonna put an accept around it around an accept block, and we're going to continue if the object accepts out so the only thing that can happen here is that the object does not return if it does not return we're just going to continue and go to the next one so everything else here is still in play so let's actually see what happens here so let's give this a run we're going to run our cleanup method it returned three objects great we're going to go to our object here one of them we're going to delete it we're going to go back to the game page we're then going to go to our Celery task and watch it execute. And great, as you can see, game three has not yet occurred. We're gonna go to our games page, we're gonna refresh here. And as you can see, the tennis game did not become alive again. What ended up happening was it entered the accept block, it, it looked up the ID, it couldn't find it, and then it continued. So this concludes our screencast on celery and models and how to write your own management commands. I'll see you guys next week.